Welcome into my studio. On this video I'm going to show how I drew these Lima eyes using pastels and there's a three hour really detailed video of this over on my Patreon art channel. Hope you find it of use. Okay I think it's time to start on the eyes now. They're both very similar in colour so I'm going to work on both of them at the same time and that will make it easy then for me to keep using and selecting the same colour pastels as I build them up. If one eye was perhaps in a lot of shade and the other eye in extreme highlight then you know it could look very different the colors could be very very different between the eyes and then I just work on one at a time but I'm going to use the sticks as well you can see I, I can even do small areas such as this I'm doing little circular strokes because I want it to blend nice and evenly and you can mix, mix and match your pastels as well I can use my pencils I can use the sticks it doesn't really matter they all mix and match which is good because sometimes you find the color that you you want is not in your sticks but it's in your pencils or vice versa and that saves buy-in lots of different sets and when you can use any So going a bit darker now and the thing to get right is not particularly the colors that's not as essential but the tones so the lightness and the darkness that's much more critical the eyes as I keep saying in my videos they're not going to come alive until I put the highlight in and if you want a very very white bright highlight such as this you can then leave that spot out if you want because obviously it'll, it'll go even brighter if it's on pure pastel paper but more often than not you can you can lay a nice white actually on top so I'm still using those circular strokes blending with the stick itself and then I can use my finger or a little stump as well if I want to do even more refined blending Now this little stump is a bit harder, it's just a cheapie that I found in an art shop, I think it's Crimson Blake, but it's a hard paper stump, so rather than a pastel stump, it's a paper stump. And that means it's much harder and it doesn't blend the colours away, it doesn't remove any of the colours really, but it pushes it into the surface. So if I don't want something to move much, that's when I use the hard stump. When I want to blend it away and really get a softness, that's when I use the rice stump. The softer Derwent stump. So you can see I'm using little circular strokes again, helping me get that nice blend. Okay, let's zoom in nice and close. You can see I've got a piece of pastel mat on the front, and that I use to check my colours and my pencils and my sticks against to see if I've got all the colours that I think I need that are quite close to the Lima's eye. So once I've got my, say, perhaps I've got five or six pencils out, it's nice to check the colours first, make sure you've got them all, and then you can put them all to the side, so you haven't got to go searching around in your sets, interrupting your concentration. You know you'll have them at hand, literally, and you can really concentrate then on just applying them in the right places. Now I may not have exact colours, but they're going to be close enough, and they're going to give me the effect now in the reference you can see how close I've got it. Now if you can get it as close as this when you're doing whatever subject you're going to do, it's going to help you a lot, a heck of a lot. Because you've only got a glance just down, perhaps 20 millimeters. You're obviously almost seeing the same thing as you're looking without even moving your eyes. So it's easy then to judge the colors, to judge whether you're, you're close, whether you're right, whether you're wrong. And I'm not moving that reference sense, so it's not really smudging anything underneath. Not it really matters yet because I haven't got any detail down underneath. 
but having it this close is a massive advantage. Now, I'm not going to do a lot of talking about this, but I'm going to leave it mostly at real time so you can really see this build up. And obviously I'm just layering colors and getting that nice lightness and darkness correct. Looking for all the subtle color changes. And it's surprising how many different colors you can see in the eye when you know when you really concentrate you may think oh it's a greeny brown but when you concentrate there's lots and lots of different color changes and you can spend as much time on the eyes as you want By darkening the area around the eyes and getting those the tones quite close, that's going to help me judge the actual eyeball colour itself. So that's why I've started to do that and I want to get the shape right as well.
once I've got that right it's all fairly close now I'm going to start to position the pupil because otherwise I'm going to completely lose the little faint pencil line that I can see that shows me the size of the pupil and the position because it's critical to get that right otherwise it's going to look a bit cross-eyed or, or something strange so I need to get that in the pencil I'm using now is Karen Dash black and that one goes a little bit darker than the uh, Carbothello black so it's a nice pencil to get hold of but it's still hard enough that you can sharpen it in a crank handle sharpener any softer than that when you're starting to talk some of the soft charcoals that go darker again then they really crumble in the sharpeners So let's get a little bit of the highlight in. So I'm starting off with a blue. So I don't want to go straight into the white. Let's see how that looks. I'm going to come back in and refine the eyes as well. So I might as well put some of these highlights down on the bottom section as well. Just because I love doing detail, I could easily leave this right till the last moment. But it helps you then judge it. You know, it helps me judge if I need to go lighter if I need to go darker in areas put a bit more blue in up here if I touch it with my finger I'm just softening it slightly a little bit of detail once you start doing detail it can be a bit addictive especially after you've done you know an hour or two of um, blending and, and not detailed work you may feel then you want to do a bit of detail and there's no reason why you can't just be aware you may end up smudging it a little bit as you're doing other layers and moving and resting on top just softening around that highlight a little bit it goes darker on the bottom and it's quite a ready color you think it'd be a dark perhaps a gray black but it's quite a, quite a red color quite a warm color so that's the first eye pretty much done it's good enough for now as I said I'll come back to it no doubt touch it up do a few more things here and there now I might as well make a start on the other eye now I've got my pencils already so exactly the same process same colors just gonna build it up once again getting my photo positioned just right starting with that kind of yellow ochre sienna color because that's the major color that's in there I think I'll lighten it with this orange once both eyes are at the same level of completion I can then start to put a bit of this orange perhaps in the other eye match them up work on them both at the same time if I need to just smudge in a little bit with my finger bit darker on this bottom edge with the eyes and don't normally end in a very sharp edge they normally blend out just a bit on the edge
doing that same process of getting that dark area in. That's helping me judge it again. And see really now the left eye as we look at it, how that one looks real because it's got that highlight in there compared to the right side. Makes a massive difference those highlights. So you can see I'm matching those colours up now. Very soft strokes of pencils. The Carbothella pencils are not what I would call a soft pencil, but they are much softer than the Conti sticks. And then they blend easily. And you can use the pencil to blend in to the other colour as well by doing these little circular strokes, very light. If you need more of a blend, you can touch it with your finger. A little bit of the highlight going in. And a lot of these highlights have got blues in there, so look out for that because it's usually, if it's a bright day, it's going to be that, that sunshine blue of the sky reflecting down even subtly into the eye. Now I've got them both done together, I can start to refine a little bit more and also if I need to put a bit of colour perhaps in the one and the other, perhaps a little bit of this orange just to match them up. Nothing wrong as well with me making mine perhaps a bit more vibrant. I haven't got to do it exactly like the photograph. I've got to keep the principles of the anatomy right but I can alter other things. If you're looking for even more great art sources, I've really got you covered. First off, I've got a Patreon channel that's been going well over a year or so, packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long, so you can see they're really, really in-depth. Subjects such as um, turtles, birds, elephants, big cats, you name it, it's on there. So that's my Patreon channel. And also on that Patreon channel, before I go on to something else, I've got a secret Facebook group. So only the members are actually on there. It's the most supportive and friendly Facebook group that I've ever seen. I know I'm biased, but it really is. We've got uh, four or 500 members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus that comes free with it. Also you get line art every month as well and we've just designed a brand new companion website for it so if you've joined other patrons and uh, channels and you found it very very difficult to navigate around we've got this free website that comes with it all the videos are now just a single click away couldn't be any easier than it is 
I've also got my site jasonmorgan.co.uk lots of tutorial videos DVD discs and downloads on there and if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects I've got some of those too I've got 900 plus on my website wildlifeart-online.com and they will be copyright free for you so you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever so hope you like those extra resources and i'll see you all again real soon